All right, we'll continue on with Auburn linebacker Deshaun Davis. As a reminder, if you'll raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you for question and answer, and we'll begin to take questions now. We'll start back here on the camera platform, middle row all the way to the right. Hey there, we're from uh, Mobile Cover, and obviously okay. representing Mobile, you know you're here at SEC Media Days. That's got to be a dream coming yeah. from, you know, Pritchard and all that stuff. What's your message to them and all of Mobile to get to where you are? Uh, my, my message would be to dream. Um, you know, like you just said, man, just coming from Mobile, and it's, it's a lot of talent in my era, um, in my area that, that really don't leave Mobile. And um, that's kind of the, the downside of it. But just dream, man, because in high school, I didn't know I would be in this moment. I didn't know I would be the, the college football player that I am now. I always knew I could be, and I always dreamed of being. So I think that's what got me here. So like I said, just a dream, man, and, and anything can happen. Again, if you'll just raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Go right here on the second row, left side. Uh, what do you remember about Will Muschamp from his season with you guys uh, a few years ago? Uh, coach Muschamp was a, a really good coach, man. Um, I think you know he, he put us in position to make, make some plays, and a, a lot of guys uh, bought into the system, but a lot of guys couldn't pick up the system also. But I think um, you know when he came in, um, we, we, we were needing a defense coordinator, and he came in, and a lot of guys bought into him. And we tried to get it right, and we tried to get it right, but for some reason, you know, we couldn't. So, I mean, we had to move on. And I'm glad Coach Steele came in. He, he's doing a great job with us now. Go down here on the front row, all the way to the left. What sort of progression have you seen out of the running backs trying to replace on Johnson? I think they've been doing a really good job. Uh, this spring, they a lot of guys showed flashes. Uh, Cam Martin ran really tough when he ran. Um, Whitlow came in, and as a, as a freshman, a redshirt freshman, you know, you didn't know if he had the ability or if he didn't, but he made a lot of plays. Uh, he ran really well in the spring game. C.J. Tober ran really well. Um, Malik Miller is doing a, 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 a very good job of running aggressive. Asa came in as a, a freshman. Um, he, when he was practicing with us, he's supposed to be going to prom. You know, we joke, <laughs> joked about, uh, joke with him about that all the time. So I think we have a really good running back committee, but um, as Coach Mazan said, Cam Martin is, if we had a game today, Cam Martin would be the guy. But fall count should be really interesting banging with those guys. Go over here on the aisle on the back row to the right. Uh, Jared Stenham called mm. the LSU loss the lowest of the low last year. Yeah. And you guys had that big lead and everything. Yeah. Can you relive that for a second and then how did it propel you guys forward? Uh, you want to take me back to that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was a that was a really tough loss, man. And um I think it was it was probably at that time was the worst loss that I felt, you know, uh, blowing that lead on the road, knowing what was at stake, not uh, winning at LSU for a long time. But I think that that made us who we were. Um, you know, we faced adversity after that game, and uh, we came back in the team room. The first thing that Coach Mazan told us was we still had a chance. You know, our our goals for the year to get to the SC championship and to get to the uh, college football playoffs were still intact. And as you as you know, we we came close to um, you know achieving those goals of winning the SC championship. We came up a little short, but we found out about ourselves um, as teammates, as as men, and as Auburn University. And I think we we handled it pretty well coming back. Go to the camera platform to the right side, all the way in the back. Hey, Deshaun. Mm -hmm. So a lot of expectations for Auburn defense going into this season. Just yeah. how much do y'all read about that, or do you not really pay attention to it? One, and then two, the position that you're in. How much pride do you take on that defense? You're one of those guys that really gets excited, you know, mm -hmm. when a big play happens, whether you make it or one of your teammates on the defensive side. Yeah. Um, answering question number one, you know, we know we can be pretty good. Uh, we don't know if we will be as good as last year defense or if we will be better, because um, right now it's just all paper talk. You know, no matter if they say we're going to be good, we're going to be bad, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, we have to step on the field and, and make plays if we're going to be a good defense. And um, for me personally, I take a lot of pride in being an Auburn linebacker. And um, I embrace every moment. I embrace every game because I know for me, once at one point in time, I was not on the field. And um, I've, I missed three consecutive years of football at one point, uh, starting with my senior year in high school because of ACL injury. So, I mean, I, I never take a snap for granted. That's why every time you see me make a play, I celebrate because I know, uh, like I was just saying, one point in time, it wasn't me out there. And I'm living a dream right now, man, playing college football, 
playing in the SEC, representing my state, playing in, in state, and having a lot of people at home representing and you know rooting for me. I'm, I'm living the dream right now. We'll go down here on the front row, left side. Sean, it's been so long since you had that injured knee. Uh, yeah. I remember that in high school, a lot of teams kind of looked away from you because mm -hmm. of that, but Auburn didn't. Does this still kind of fire you up to, to think about, you know, a lot of people overlooked you and you kind of have to fight through that now? Yeah, it, it definitely does. And it's not a day go by that I, I, I don't think about it. Um, I know a lot of things are against me anytime I step on the field. Um, from you know, saying I'm too short, so my, my arms are not long enough. and, and but you're going to always have doubters. You know, it's always going to be, no matter how good you are, it's always going to be that negative category. But um, my position coach always tell me, when people talk negative about you, they, they should have, have to say a but after that. So they can say, you know, he's 5'11", maybe six foot, but, and after you, when, when you hear that but, it needs to be a, a long list of good things that they can say, and I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm doing that so far. I'll go over here standing to the right. We're doing a piece on Jarrett Stidham, mm. who's just in here. Uh, how have you seen him grow as perhaps the leader of this team in only one year? It looks like yeah. he's really stepped up and he's looked up to by you folks. Yeah, we, we definitely look up to uh, Jarrett as a leader, not just because he's a quarterback and a quarterback is supposed to be a leader, but um, he, do, he does a great job of making sure uh, everything is in order on the field, off the field. You know, he, he comes to practice with energy every day. Um, and as you can see, it pays off for him in the game. So, uh, you know, just seeing him come in and when he came in from Baylor, no one knew, really knew who he was. And we didn't know how, if he was going to fit in with the group. But he came in and he, he, didn't, he didn't do too much to get us to buy into him. You know, he's, he, he was himself. And that was enough for us. And ever since, you know, last year around this time, we knew he was going to be the guy. And we stuck with him and we're sticking with him to this day. Go down here on the front row on the aisle to the left. Just showing a lot of, a lot of People on the front seven get, getting credit going yeah. into the season. Montavious kind of gets lost in the shelf a little bit. What, what does he bring to the table for you guys on defense? He brings a lot of vers um, versatility to us. Um, he's, a, he's kind of a safety bill, you would say, but he has a mean streak like a linebacker. He's, he's not scared to stick his face in the fan and go make plays. Uh, he has the ability to step out and you know cover fast slot receivers. And when he's on the field, he gives Coach Steele the ability to make a lot of calls that he would make in our dime personnel, even if we're in nickel. You know, that's just kind of just the kind of ability that he has. But it's, it's some other guys in our room that can do the same thing. But I probably would say he's right now, he's the most athletic linebacker that we have. And, you know, I'm glad to have him on the side of me. <laughs> Go over here on the second row to the right side. Sean, you've been quoted before as saying that I'm actually the defensive coordinator. He just gets yeah. paid. What does it mean to be so respected by a guy like Kevin Steele? I mean, it means the world to me, man. Um, you know, just seeing how long Coach Steele has been in the coaching game. He's been in the SEC. He's been in the NFL. And um, he, he tells me every Saturday, man, he, he's giving me the keys, you know, drive the car. And, and that's, that's just his way of telling me I'm on the field, you know, be him. You know, be, be, that, uh, be that mind, be that leader, bring that passion and the energy that my defense, that my defense need. And um, just each and every day, I, I try to do that. Anytime we go to the practice field, we're in meetings, I'm locked in. I watch a ton of film with him um, and my position coach. That's why he has so much trust and faith in me. And um, I, sometimes I feel like I can make a call for him. You know, that's, that's how I feel like I'm in his back pocket. So uh, we, we kind of have the same mind, but uh, like I said, he's been in the game for a long time, so he's way ahead of me. <laughs> we'll go to the camera position, standing on the front row right there in the middle. What type, of, what type of player is Jordan Peters, and how have you seen him kind of progress since he arrived on campus? Yeah, Jordan has definitely progressed. Um, he, he's a kind of a athletic guy that we can use in that nickel position. Um, his ability to tackle makes him a really good player. You know, uh, a lot of DBs, they have the, the title of not being good tacklers, but Jordan sticks his face in the fan and he makes some plays with us and run fits. And he has the, the wiggle enough to, to stick with receivers when we want to play man and make some good plays in man coverage. I think uh, the biggest play for him last year was against Alabama when he had to step up and cover uh, Calvin Ridley. And when I looked over that, it wasn't a doubt in my mind that he had the ability to do it and that he had the confidence to do it. He made the play, you know, he got up inside of the turn. It was a big third down stop for our team. So I, I, I look for some big things for him coming up this season. We'll go standing over here to the right side. 
Uh, your coach just called uh, Russell one of the most underrated players in the SEC mm. and one of the most underrated defensive linemen. You know, what does he bring to the table specifically for your defense, and what's it like playing behind those that group as a whole? Uh, Dante is, is is a really good interior uh, defensive tackle, and I kind of think he also I kind of also think you know he gets overshadowed well not overshadowed but a lot of people don't you know talk about him for whatever reason, and uh, he's hands down one of the best the best players on our team. And uh, for me to be successful, those guys have to be successful. And I always give them credit, but I know, I know when it when it comes down to it, if I'm making a play, they've done their job. And you might see me celebrating, but if you rewind that tape, you're definitely going to see them blowing someone up and recreating a new line of scrimmage. But Dunn is a really good, a really good um, defensive lineman for us, and I appreciate him a lot. Go to the camera position on the front row to the right side. On obviously a, a successful coach for those of us that can't be there at practice and in the locker room, what makes him successful? Why? Do, what do you think would surprise us about how he coaches behind the scenes? Um, Cause he's he's kind of intense. Um, I don't think a lot of people would see that from him. You know, he uh, he kind of looks laid back on on TV or when he gets on camera, like he's kind of nonchalant. But when we're at practice, man, you know, he wants things done. And he, and he can get intense, you know. Uh, he, he can raise his voice. Uh, he, he'll yell at you sometimes. And, but it's, it's, it's just coaching. There's, no, there's nothing different that anyone else, you know, is doing or should be doing. Um, but, you know, we don't take offense to it. It, it. Like I say, it's just coaching. But I think, you know, Coach Malzahn is a good coach. And I, I'm glad he's my head coach. We'll go standing over here to the right side. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about the growth of Daniel Thomas and his personality and presence on the defense? Yeah, I've seen um, Daniel grow up a lot. Uh, he played a lot his freshman year, you know, toward the end of the season. His biggest game was in the biggest game, of the, during the biggest game of the season against Alabama on the road. He caught two interceptions, put us in position to, you know, uh, score some touchdowns to uh, to actually win that game. But, um, you know, I, I'm seeing him mature as a man and as a football player. You know, he's one of my close friends on the team. Uh, we, our room is right down the hall from each other. Um, we, we joke about it all the time about who has the most talent out of Montgomery and Mobile. So the, um, that's a, a friendly argument that we have. But DC is going to be uh, very special for us this year. Uh, right now they have him penciled in as a starting safety. He has a, a big body, so he's coming down. He's making a lot of tackles. Uh, he can cover very well also. Got time for a couple more. We'll go standing over here to the left side. What are you some impressions of KJ Britt and some of those younger linebackers, and what do they bring to that defense? Man, KJ is a thumper, man. Uh, we we gave him the nickname Downhill Britt because uh, when he see the quarterback catch the ball and turn around for a handoff, he's gone. So majority of the time, if it's to play action, he's not going to be where he's supposed to be in a drop. But um, he he's getting better and better, man. And uh, that's just that's just you know him binding to the system. That's that that speaks volume for our position coach. You know, taking time and molding him. As a player, you know he played for us last year as a freshman in some big games. You know, he played he played in that LSU game, um, played a lot of special teams for us, and you know I think he's going to have a bigger role this year, and I'm excited to see how he pan out. And final question, we'll go to the camera platform on the right side in the back. Uh, going into the third consecutive game in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, mm -hmm. uh, what is the team's mindset on to break the Mercedes-Benz curse, and, and how is an environment uh, different from Jordan here back uh, back home? I mean, we're just using those games as motivation, man. Um, we, we we understand that we lost two games in that in that stadium the last the last two times we've been there, and uh, we know it was at stake. Uh, I, I've been saying this is a, this is the playoff game right off the bat. You know we don't have time to make mistakes. We don't have time to start the season slow. So um, me personally, I, I've already dove in. I'm watching film. Uh, Washington is a really good team. Um, we have our hands full. We know that, but. So like, like I say, we, we've been working hard this summer, man. Um, I'm, I'm trying to put my team in the best position that I can possibly put them in to make plays on the defense side of the ball. And I know for me to do that, I have to be on top of my game. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to having the best season that I can have and, and, and possibly being, being one of the best linebackers in the country at the end of the year. Thanks, Deshaun.